Well, good morning and welcome to the special meeting of the Budget and Finance Committee of May 30th, 2017. Roll call. Council Member Rivera. Here. Council Member Weir. Here. Move on to item two, adoption of the April 27th, 2017 agenda summary report. I move adoption. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. This brings us to item three, public statements. Does anyone here wish to address the committee on any matter not on the agenda? If so, please come forward now. The committee will not be able to take any action, but may direct the matter to staff for response or placement on a future agenda. If you are to speak, if you are here to speak on the PACE program, this is not the time for you to speak. Are there any speakers for any agenda, any item that's not on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to new business, discussion and committee recommendations regarding the PEACE program. Before we begin, I would like to state a few guidelines as it relates to public comments on this item. Uh, each side will be allowed a total of 30 minutes to present its public comments, beginning with those opposed to the PACE program. Each speaker should identify themselves and make statements quickly so that others may speak. There is no need to fill out a speaker card this morning. Uh, speakers may pose questions during their statements, but they may not be uh, answered until after all comments are received. Speakers should be precise and not repeat the remarks of previous speakers. Speakers that have written comments that are longer than their verbal statements may provide them to city staff who will subsequently deliver a copy to the committee members. Speakers should address the committee members directly and not engage in dialogue with those seated in the audience. Each side will be allowed a five minute rebuttal period and audience applause and displaying signage is not allowed and will be strictly enforced. Thank you for your cooperation and at this time, I will ask Mr. Tandy for his staff report. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, I, I wanted to start out uh, with a, a statement about what I believe is the real issue before you this morning. Uh, the uh, subject matter is the Property Assessed Clean Energy or PACE program. What you're really uh, deciding or sending to the City Council as a recommendation uh, is whether it is in the best interest of your constituents to continue to allow placement of PACE charges on the property tax bills. Uh, this is not an action about being pro or con jobs or economy or pro or con uh, clean energy. In my opinion, this is your real decision. Is it in the public interest to allow these charges to be placed on property tax bills? In 2008, uh, the state of California enabled cities to participate in PACE programs. Uh, clean energy improvements are allowed to be placed on property tax bills as a priority lien, just as property taxes are. <laughs> Bakersfield has authorized five PACE providers to operate. Um, you see California First, Fig Tree, Hero, Y Green Works, and E3. Uh, and the dates of approval by the council of the allowance of these five providers range from March of 2010 to September of 2015. The PACE providers uh, have given us information indicating that since 2014, a total of 2,706 projects have been completed in the city limits. Uh, of those, 1,174 are for solar energy and 105 are for drought related projects. The remaining balance is for roof replacement, air conditioning, doors, windows, and a series of other items. I believe it's tab B in your uh, packet uh, is a, a detailing by provider of what they have done and uh, the type of improvement involved. Recently, uh, the Association of Realtors, uh, which uh, interestingly I think uh, was founded in Bakersfield in 1905, has approached the city requesting that the contracts with the PACE providers be terminated. 
Um, this is an issue not only in Bakersfield, but it has arisen at the state and federal level, and there are uh, legislative actions pending in the state legislature and Congress uh, that would result in uh, reform measures, I guess one would say, uh, regarding PACE. I am not going to attempt to fully summarize the arguments of either party. I'm going to do the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure they will give you the full detail. Uh, allegations from the Association of Realtors include uh, customers did not understand their property tax was going up, uh, thus experiencing financial hardship, out-of-market costs for improvements, out-of-market interest rates, disruption in real estate transactions due to the priority lien status of PACE loans, uh, and that ha standard home improvements, roofs, air conditioning, etc., do not belong on the property tax bill. Prior to PACE, of course, they were routinely done in the free marketplace. PACE providers counter with, uh, they create jobs, they improve energy efficiency. Uh, disclosure laws have improved since they began work. Additional disclosure laws and application of federal consumer protection standards are under consideration in the legislature and Congress. And they have enter, indicated they're willing to enter into a participation agreement with the city. Uh, both the Association of Realtors and PACE providers have provided numerous materials to the city. Uh, most are attached in exhibits C and D uh, to your agenda today. Uh, both have advertised, uh, sent out emails, and related lobbying efforts. Um, two parties, uh, the two parties uh, met with city staff in an effort to see if an accommodation could be reached. Uh, that effort was not successful. In the opinion of city staff, perhaps the most meaningful communication at all of all came from Kern County Assessor Recorder John Lifquist, uh, whose income, as he's an elected official, is not dependent upon this debate and who has direct contact with the impacted property owners. Uh, Mr. Lifquist's uh, letter is in your packet marked as Exhibit A, I believe. I don't know whether he's here today, and I actually don't know Mr. Lifquist, uh, but I did think he was quite articulate in his statements, so I'm going to uh, read an excerpt or two from his letter. From all appearances, the majority of PACE improvements are completed in a competent manner by honest contractors who represent the program with clear and candid disclosure. Unfortunately, this is not always the case, and it is possible to find cases where homeowners have been significantly overcharged. There are also many stories of homeowners who believe that the specifics of the loan lien or fees were misrepresented to them. In the class action suit Loyola versus Western Riverside Council of Governments, the lawyer for the defense argues that the PACE program is not subject to government oversight in the form of Truth of Lending Act or Home Ownership Protection Act. The lawyers also argue that since PACE lenders are not required to determine the borrower's ability to repay, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau has no say in the process. A little later, the reasoning behind the property tax liens is that PACE improvements are a public good, that energy and water conservation efforts are necessary to address the issue of global warming. This might be true, but is incentivizing a program without standard consumer protections through government enforcement of the lien really a public good? Question mark. Many aspects of the program are laudable, a benefit to some local homeowners, the boon to local contractors. But if the program is to be backed by local government, shouldn't local government insist on safeguards and oversight? Staff is not making a recommendation this morning, pro or con. We were interested in seeing what evolved out of this uh, meeting. Uh, the staff does believe, however, there is substantial evidence of negative unintended consequences having occurred as a result of the city allowance of the PACE program. It appears uh, from reading uh, the details submitted by the Association of Realtors uh, that all of the formal complaints they turned in are about two of the five providers. The predominant types of improvements appear to be air conditioning, paint, windows, and doors. 
Uh, we are not aware as a city staff as to what the future outcome of reforms at the state and federal level will be or when they will be uh, finalized. Uh, this will be unreadable from where you are. This is the second version of the listing of complaints uh, provided at my request by the Association of Realtors. Um, they did indicate there were some personal disclosure, embarrassment, and other uh, issues associated with providing the names of the parties. Uh, so I uh, asked them if any a member of the committee or council is interested in an investigation of the accuracy of the details on this list. Uh, they have indicated that they will give us the name uh, to a staffer or a city council member uh, for such investigation. I can tell you that I signed the memos uh, on all five PACE providers recommending council approval of their creation. I can also tell you I did not imagine that it would result in some of the types of instances uh, that are recanted in this list. You have several options uh, with you today. You can recommend to the full city council that we continue with the PACE programs as is. You can recommend that the PACE programs continued for a set period of time, such as 90 to 180 days, to identify if state or federal reform measures uh, resolve the problems and concerns. You can recommend termination of the FICE, uh, PACE programs to the full city council, and you can send the full uh, city council the decision without a recommendation. Um, in the past, uh, sometimes uh, we've had uh, minority and majority reports on issues go to city council. I think our record was three minority reports. Uh, hopefully that does not occur, but uh, there are a wide range of decision-making options available to you, including uh, meeting again as a committee on this matter. Uh, so with that, while uh, I could take questions now, it would probably be more appropriate after the public testimony. Thank you, Mr. Tandy. We'll now begin with the public comments, beginning with those opposed to the PACE program. As a reminder, reminder each side will be given 30 minutes, and we will strictly adhere to that time. Uh, so uh, please state your name and proceed. Good morning. My name is Sherry Anthes. I am the Vice President of Operations for Coldwell Banker Preferred Realtors. Thank you, committee and staff, for allowing me to address you this morning. Reputation is everything. And whether there is proof or perception, where there is a relationship of trust, there is also a responsibility. I know all of you, along with the Bakersfield Association of Realtors and many other community leaders and organizations, work very hard to ensure that the people of Bakersfield can trust in the decisions we make and the programs we endorse. They most assuredly have the right to trust that we have vetted the programs and people who are allowed to enter into the privacy of their own home and offer a financial commitment that promises to enhance their quality of life and yet is tied to the single most greatest investment that many of them will make, their home. It's no surprise that PACE has been so successful in our community. We are fertile grounds and its success depends upon that relationship of trust that we have all so collectively worked hard to instill in our community. I am here as an advocate for the homeowner and for those whose dream it is to one day be one. Kern County, specifically Bakersfield, has one of the most affordable homeownership rates in the entire state of California. It is my professional opinion, PACE, is a direct threat to our sustainability of that affordability. Our opposition has very deep pockets and the financial impact to them is substantial. So it's no surprise that they have fought so hard against our efforts to expose the deficiencies and negative impact of the program. Their target market are the financially challenged, lower income and elderly homeowner. Their sales pitches include words like green, 
energy efficiency, tax deductible, government program, and savings. It's our position that most of these improvements do not add value and often are misrepresented. In many cases, they encumber the property at a level that far exceeds its market value. The realtor community swears by a code of ethics. It is our commitment to ensure that the trust of our community and homeowner is not misplaced. And we will stand in opposition to anything that threatens our local housing market. This effort has been emotional, exhausting, and at times very overwhelming. And yet we are still here. The issues that propelled us into this conversation continue and have actually been compounded. We do not believe it is the responsibility of our local government to expend our resources to ensure the appropriate behavior of a PACE vendor or to police the bad actors. The policy itself, the PACE policy itself is flawed. And that is where the change must take place. I know that we have placed you in a tough position. And we are not the only community engaged in this conversation, but we are the one poised to make a decision. We are the one faced with an opportunity to change our direction. So I ask the committee to vote on option C, recommend the termination of the five PACE providers to the full city council and bring to a halt this program that in its current state is doing more harm than good. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Gonzalez, members of the board, Michael Turnip Seed representing Kern Tax. Three basic points. PACE was ill conceived as mentioned by the previous speaker. We certainly agree with the assessor's letter, the Lindquist. We've laid out our points in our own letter to you. The biggest problem that happens here is when you pay your property taxes and you can't pay your property taxes, you have five years to make it right. If you use your home loan to pay and make your payments and you miss a payment, a balloon payment on your account that pays your property tax and insurance, you're immediately in default, and in 90 days, you can face foreclosure. That's the fundamental flaw with this financing. If added disclosures are not added, if the problems are not legally addressed, there's really no other option than to uh, take the realtor's recommendations. It's totally up to you because you have authorized this to happen in our community along with the county. So if you in the county don't stop it locally and there's no legislation to improve it, protect uh, consumer protections, uh, we have to ask to terminate. When, 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 the, when the laws are modified and consumer protections like everyone else are put in place, it'll be time to talk about it again and reconsider. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Gonzalez, members of the committee. My name is Nick Ortiz. I represent the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Uh, also appreciate the opportunity to provide comments on this issue to the committee today. The chamber represents 1,100 members, and we are lucky to have members on both sides of this issue. Maybe lucky is not the exact right word. Um, and we held multiple meetings on this topic where we heard from all sides um, and really tried to delve into the details. Um, we recognize that PACE is definitely a job provider. It definitely drives economic activity. And beyond the solar installation, assisting homeowners with ways to manage water conservation, energy efficiency um, is important. And we'd like to see some of those efforts continue in some form. And while the consumer issues that were raised are troubling and the corrective actions made by the industries seem to be working when they can self-police, they are not the chamber's overall concern. We must balance good government, mandates from Sacramento, and local economic activity when we're looking at issues. 
The concern of the chamber is um, the same that um, I think Mr. Tandy laid out, the super lien status um, that provides these um, owners or these uh, lenders uh, a most beneficial position in the event of a default. Um, and, you know, beyond that, you know, the state has implemented some reforms, and one of those reforms is a, a pool of both funds from PACE and taxpayer dollars to make the mortgage industry or the mortgage, um, um, the actual lien holder whole. And so, you know, if these PACE programs or if these, um, if these assessments cause a delinquency, then it's the taxpayer who ultimately has to make the mortgage company whole. And then finally, we, we recognize that the program is authorized by the state. Um, it was state legislation, legislation. The only real discretion that the city has is to um, either go forward with the program or um, to stop it. There is no real discretion to make changes to um, the tenets of the state legislation. So the chamber would support both the city and the county of Kern suspending their PACE programs until such a time that through future legislation, the PACE liens are subordinated to the original mortgage. So basically taking away that super lien status. So thank you very much for your time and appreciate it. Good morning, and I thank you for listening to me. My name's Margaret Smith. Shame, embarrassment, humiliation, money, loss of sleep. I experienced all of these things. And as a registered nurse, retired 20 years ago, I was totally embarrassed by the fact that I had signed what I signed as a contract. My husband and I had stopped at a kiosk in Costco. We inquired about refrigeration for our house. We lived in it, or are still living in this house for 49 years. We moved there in 1968. Our house refrigeration, one hour was sent out to our house. Salesman's name was Nathan DuPont. He told us that all costs would be written off on our taxes. We had add-ons galore when I used my inhaler. It'd be good for my breathing, keep down the dust, really help my lung condition of asthma. Our 1,400 square foot house, 49 years old, actually 59, came to $23,800 bill. We only paid 22000 for the house in 1968. But we were convinced Costco, one hour, Monarch, whatever he's calling himself now, Mark DeVries, that this was going to be written off on our taxes. So we blithely went along through life till we went in to file our taxes. And we were told that we were barely above the poverty level on Social Security, and there was no way possible to deduct one penny of this. It adds approximately 3,000 a year to our taxes, and by the end of the contract in 15 years with the hero interest, we will be paying $50,000 on this contract. And I can show you the papers. We have filed suit with the district attorney's office after consulting with several people. And also at their recommendation, the Greater Bakersfield Assistance League for Elder Abuse. I'm 75 years old. The owner, Mark DeVries, said we got a good deal on our unit when he and the hero representative said that 7.5% was their usual charge for interest. When we complained and they came out to our house, they offered us $4,000 to drop the suits that day, both of them sitting on the couch. We later had two fellows, approximately three to four months, from the Hero out of San Diego, try to talk us out of the lawsuit, saying the DA won't do anything. We worked for the DA in San Diego, got nowhere, nobody does anything. It was false, it was misleading, that it could be deducted in any manner on one hour, whatever their name is now, and the salesperson, and Costco for allowing this min misinformation to be given to anyone. We all have liens against our homes, and at my age, I can't even sell it. 
We have paid $9,000 so far for our unit, and we would be very happy to have this resolved to remove the lien against us personally and the ability at 75 years old with failing health to sell it if necessary. And it may be a good program if the companies that use it weren't using the government to bookkeep and the company didn't overcharge their clients in the first place and Hero having a lien on the home at 7.5%. You council persons have an opportunity to respond. I had no idea 4,000 persons till I read the newspaper. I thought I was the only sucker in the bunch. You are bookkeeping for all of these people and they are unhappy about the excess and over exorbitant charges. Look out for the welfare of your constituents. Be morally correct in protecting other unsuspecting clients. Many of them, I'm sure, are not well educated. They're probably in the same boat we are. But you, and you alone, are and will be responsible for this predatory mess if it continues. Good morning, my name is Melissa Dominguez and uh, two years ago we got involved with the HERO for new windows and doors. Um, when the HERO representative came to our home to sign papers, he guaranteed us that we would be able to refinance our home. Um, we have been trying to refinance our home for about nine months now and very actively for the past six weeks, our mortgage company won't touch it. They've been giving us a runaround and I haven't found anybody that will touch it because of the lien. When HERO came to the house, they made it seem like it was all fine and it was gonna benefit us and it hasn't. It has just caused more hardship and like I said, now financially that we are able to refinance, nobody will touch it because of the big lien on it. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Dr. Scott Dick. I am the Government Affairs Director for the Monterey County Association of Realtors. Uh, I've been studying PACE for about two years and that's why Kim invited me up. Monterey County is, I, I recognize that Kern is special and unique, but Monterey County's economy is centers around agriculture and we have large clusters of retirees living around the former Fort Ord. And so some of the things that uh, we've experienced in Monterey County, and the program is relatively new there, has been going on in Southern California for a long time. And yesterday was Memorial Day. I did serve uh, as an Army officer and a former Marine, by the way. Mortgage lenders and this type of loan should be considered as a mortgage-related product. Federal regulations define a mortgage loan, which means any consumer credit transaction that is secured by the principal dwelling of a consumer, including home improvement loans. That's number one. Second, these types of loans have long been recognized as predatory lending. Now, why do I say that? That's a pretty bold statement. Because multiple sources define predatory lending as a loan based on the borrower's equity in the property and not on the borrower's ability to pay. Predatory lending is also defined as any unfair credit practice that harms the borrower and eventually affects the credit or ownership interest of the borrower. One could also describe this as equity stripping because it strips out the equity that a homeowner has in their property to finance questionable uh, renovation retrofits. It also fits the category of subprime lending. Subprime lending refers to loans to people with poor credit and how do we know the subprime lending? Because well, we don't, because there's no real underwriting of the homeowner's ability to pay those loans, the new and improved property taxes. And this is the exact market that PACE providers target. They often refer to the speed of the approval process and how people who don't qualify for HELOCs, that's a home equity line of credit, qualify for these loans. Yes, because they don't do any kind of, of underwriting of the homeowner's ability to repay the loan. Uh, they also refer to these high cost mortgages as being better or as good as credit card loans. Well, credit cards don't fall under the public good. And that is just a distraction from the issue of these high interest rates. In Monterey County, we're seeing them as high as 
FHFA research demonstrated there's a correlation between low FICO scores and higher mortgage default rates. And I'll have uh, the evidence for those in this stack I'll turn over uh, after the, the public comment. There's even a correlation between default rates and whether a home has a second lien on the property. To put this in perspective, a recent CNN Money Report described a Moody's warning about subprime auto loans. They wrote, a lack of income verification creates more uncertainty around whether borrowers will be able to afford their monthly payments. And they talked about the two competitors in the market. One checks 64% of applicant incomes. Santander doesn't. And it's what they wrote, what Moody's wrote was, Santander's behavior is reminiscent of the practices that led to the home loan crisis where people were getting home mortgages who clearly should not have. I apply this to these PACE loans as well. And one would say, oh, sub, these uh, uh, PACE loans are just part of the mortgage market, very small part. But there's a lot of data that shows that uh, there's a FHFA study that demonstrates how subprime and what they call non-traditional mortgages in 1998, 1999, 2000 were a very small part of the market. They ballooned up till 2008 and then completely disappeared. And in this uh, excerpt from a FHFA document, there's a map of the targets of these kind of subprime and non-traditional mortgages. And this county and Monterey County and other counties in Southern California are over 50% of those loans originated were subprime loans. Next, when they value a property, they don't value, they don't use an appraiser, they use automated valuation modeling. And uh, after me is an, uh, a gentleman who's gonna talk about why that's deficient. No other mortgage lender is allowed to use AVM. Now think about this, a contractor who's acting as a loan originator, they don't even do an interior inspection and that's absolutely necessary to value a property. The entire program is supposed to be for the, par the public good. The, the improvements are supposed to match the significance of sewers and street lights and sidewalks and these don't. Uh, the only reason that they, the government is, is allowed to collect these taxes is because it's supposed to be for a, a public good. And if the products that the PACE providers sell were effective and paid for themselves, which they don't, it would be different. Another thing that our county didn't realize, and I'm not sure that this county realizes, is that by authorizing PACE and HERO, you're more than facilitating these financial products. As this young lady behind me said, you're doing the bookkeeping. You're actually picking winners and losers. If you look at what a business should estimate when they outsource their uh, accounts receivable, they're supposed to estimate between 15 and 40% uh, per invoice of what it costs, staffing, customer relations, and the actual production. I did some quick uh, uh, analysis based on the reports of the PACE providers. In 2014, the county subsidized the PACE providers to the tune of about $89,000. In 2015, about $2.8 million. About in 2016, 4.5 million, and in 2017, about another million. And this is what it would cost those PACE providers if they did their own uh, accounts receivable, which they don't. In Monterey County, and I think in Kern County as well, they pay $35 per transaction per year. That's not even close to what that costs. And our county assessor, who was initially for the program, uh, called me and had an issue where they were told by staff that this should be cost the county nothing. And yet he spent hours and hours and hours in a, 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 just a couple months ago trying to unsort an issue with a PACE bill that was paid off in March of 2016 and was never removed from the, the county auditor, was never told it was, it was paid off. And so in December, the homeowner the new homeowner got the tax bill with the hero loan still on it. And of course, who bore the, who bore the brunt of those angry phone calls? The tax assessor and the tax collector. So, we talk about the products. In Bakersfield, and I have the documents here to show you, uh, in Bakersfield, Energy Star windows. So you don't need gold-plated windows here in Bakersfield. You need only the windows that meet Energy Star standards. 
And in California, because of our, our climate, our mild climate, we spend more on electronics, lighting, and appliances than we do on heating and cooling. And I have that evidence here too. In Bakersfield, Energy Star estimates that double pane windows, and you can't just replace one in a program, you have to replace all of them. So a prudent homeowner might say, I'll go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get the windows on the street, get them double pane, pay for them as I go, you know, at their own pace, if you will. Energy Star estimates that double pane windows, replacing single pane with double pane, will save Bakerfield homeowners $388 a year. They don't even come close to, to uh, paying for themselves. And yet the Department of Energy has said these programs, these products, must pay for themselves, especially with the low income. And the, no matter what product they sell, at 10.5% APR is what we're seeing in Monterey County down here, 9.5%, sometimes 10 those products will never pay for themselves. And it puts the home ownership at risk. Why? The PACE providers will tell you, we have a very low default rate. Of course, people don't want to lose their homes because they can't pay their property taxes, so they have to sell instead. And that money that our elderly uses for long-term assisted care or moving uh, in some kind of assisted living, that money, that money, that equity has been stripped out to pay for over cost windows. The marginal, my favorite, is the solar uh, reflective paint jobs. There's absolutely no evidence that I could find except one article, journal article, not even a journal article, written by the manufacturer of the paint that said this saves money. We're seeing $20,000 solar paint jobs. And you can buy solar reflective paint. It's about $10 more a gallon. It needs no special application, no special parts, no special prep. And I can't believe that we still allow that. It saves homeowners probably pennies per month. And when we get to uh, cost savings, the only time I've ever seen anybody say that these products will save you money is in staff documents. That's what it set up in Mon Monterey County. The only people that said that it will save you money were staff. If you look at the HERO documents, they tell contractors not to say it will save them money. And in fact, when you sign a HERO contract, you hold them harmless if it doesn't save them money. So they say don't, don't say it will save you money, and they also say don't say you can take it out on your taxes. I have a case here from Visalia who mentions the contractor and the, uh, the person by name. They were told it would cost them pennies per month, maybe $35 a month, and they could take it out of their taxes. And I'll be happy to turn that over to you. Next, we get into what I call disingenuous or deceptive reporting. These are the reports that, hero, or that uh, PACE providers have to provide to jurisdictions. If you look closely, and I looked at the methodology, what they report is the single year financing, but when they say energy savings, they cost it out for 20 years. What I would like to see is the cost to the homeowners over the 20 years period. And so they don't say it's buried where it says, look at hero.gov, it tells you how they do the methodology. I would like to see the cost to the homeowner over a 20-year period, as well as the cost savings to the homeowner over that 20-year period. I'd like to see them side by side, and you should demand that in your reports as well. The next thing is, there's something called, it's been studied in economics for 100 years, called the rebound effect. And I have an easy read document, not a journal article. I have a bunch of journal articles if you're interested on what the rebound effect is. And what the rebound effect says, in a nutshell, is when somebody for example, puts in new double pane windows, they don't take the money out and put it in the savings to pay against their property taxes. They turn their air conditioning up in the summer and they turn their heat up in the winter and they basically use more because it's cheaper. And so the idea that these products actually save homeowners money is uh, it's a phantom, it's a vapor savings. And yet we're encum encumbering uh, people Honest homeowners jeopardizing the ability to own their home with products that don't do what they say that they do. I would like to remind this body that, that a complete underwriting of a homeowner's ability to pay is critical. 
You may have seen the re recent reports that the average family, millions of working Americans, have less than $2,000 in savings, and the average family can't put together $500 for an unexpected car repair. Our elderly neighbors often live on fixed incomes from small pensions and social security payments. They depend on the equity in their homes in later life when they need to move on to assisted living or acute care. Loaning money to install useless or marginal products where they could receive truly energy efficient items like refrigerators for no or low cost deprives our seniors of an important part of their wealth and does that fits the, the requirement of doing a public good. Thank you very much. Good morning, Chairman Gonzalez and the members of the committee. I'm Gary Crabtree. I am a uh, real estate appraiser and have been in this uh, community for 54 years, 55 years now. Uh, I don't have much time, so I'm going to have to abbreviate this and address one issue, and that's the issue of value. Uh, with the pace lanes on the property, uh, the properties are going to be virtually unsaleable. So if you're going to uh, obtain a pace lien on your property, uh, you better be planning on living there for 15 or 20 years because you're not going to be able to sell it. Number one, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae prohibits any loan. They will not purchase any loans with a pace lien on them. That's 40%. 40% of all the loans that are generated in Kern County or in Bakersfield are underwritten and passed on on the secondary market to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. On the other hand, the uh, FHA will allow PACE liens on the property, but there are specific instructions to the appraiser on how to handle a PACE lien property. If the property has a PACE lien, and it is under FHA, the appraiser then, then is to adjust his value. He'll appraise the property at market value, adjust and deduct the amount of the PACE lien uh, from that property, which will then place the property probably in a negative equity position. Uh, so that's the, that's the issue. The other issue, of course, with uh, the appraiser is, is that we will also, if we are doing anything for Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae, we're going to have to uh, make the appraisal on a fair market value subject to the payoff of the PACE lien. Uh, so if you're in a negative equity position or if the PACE lien throws you in a negative equity position, you have no alternative but to go to short sale. Uh, I have evidence and I don't have time to present it all, but there are uh, two properties that uh, I have investigated. One is an FHA foreclosure where the gentleman uh, put a 510 15 sear unit on the property. One hour air conditioning uh, supplied it for 25400 I called three HERO contract providers. Their estimates for that same unit replacement was 8000 to $10,300. So this gentleman just double charged. Once the PACE lien was uh, on the property, his taxes increased by $3,500 per year. He in turn uh, could not afford it, walked FHA foreclosed on it. It is currently on the market at 299,000. The PACE people's AVM says 329,000. It is virtually unsellable. They've had two offers on the property and as soon as the property is, they found out the pace liens were on them, both of the buyers walked. So FHA is faced with that. I have one other property that the person was purchased in uh, two I'm years ago. Crabtree, that's time. Thank you, sorry. Thank you, sir. We'll now move on to public comments uh, from those who are in favor of pace. Uh, you will have 30 minutes uh, beginning now. Please state your name and proceed. My name is Lee Mathers. I live at 504 Adams Street, Bakersfield, California, 93307. Uh, I purchased a air conditioning unit from Econo Air, and uh, initially I wasn't able to afford it, and then they said that there was a HERO program. So 
I availed myself of the HERO program, and it's been on my property taxes, and I've paid the first installment without any problem. Um, I understand some people think that they didn't have to pay for what they got. Well, I went into this full knowledge that it was going to be put on my property taxes and that I'd be obligated to pay it. Anything else? Thank you, sir. You bet. Next public speaker. Please state your name and proceed. My name is Sharon Dickey. I'm a homeowner and I'm also a realtor. I am here on behalf of my neighbors who benefited from this program. They had a leaky roof with buckets to absorb all of the water that was leaking. They had $800 a month PG&E bills they couldn't afford to pay. They went with the PACE program and we're glad they did. They were aware of the fee would be added to their property taxes. They couldn't have resolved their issues of a leaky roof and outrageous utility bills without this program. So I feel like that's one of the benefits of being a homeowner is that you can make a conscious, responsible decision of what you choose to do with your home and where you want to get your financing. Um, nothing is free, nothing is that cheap, and sometimes the deal seems too good to be true, but that is our option and responsibility to make those decisions. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Kevin Hauber. I am Senior Loan Officer with the Mortgage House, the Green Division. We have uh, two offices here in Bakersfield, other offices throughout Central and Southern California. I am involved in outreach and education efforts around green financing, and that includes mortgage products, non-mortgage products, PACE, other forms of financing and incentives that consumers can use to be able to accomplish both energy efficiency and water efficiency for their homes. We have done this outreach program so far this year in Pismo Beach, in San Luis Obispo, in Salinas, and in Santa Barbara, and it has been very well received in all of those markets. We want to be able to do the same thing here. I have uh, some sample information for you that I'll leave on what we've been doing with this outreach and education program that's been primarily to the real estate community. Uh, the idea here is to go through the legislation that has occurred over the last 11 years that makes energy efficiency and water efficiency necessary and the kinds of things that are going to be coming down the pike for all property owners to deal with. There are some matrices that have been prepared about various financing options that include the mortgage, the non-mortgage products, the incentives, PACE, every available vehicle that we could list in that so that people know the options that are included. There are examples of prelim items so that realtors can know what to look for in a preliminary title report to know that there either is or isn't a pace lien on a property or is or isn't a solar lease on a property. Solar leases are often problematic kinds of issues and we have other people that we have uh, that I believe we'll hear from today that'll speak to that very issue. There is information for you on how subordinations can be done for PACE liens to FHA loans, to VA loans, and to Fannie Mae loans. And also how subordinations and payoffs are done in the case of loans that are being either refinanced or properties being sold that have PACE liens on them and want to get new financing. I work with this stuff all the time, I can assure you that it can be done, and it's really at this point a matter of the industry adjusting to this new product mix that can be a very successful mix if it's just accepted and worked with. Thank you very much.
Hello. Um, just have a few things to say. Um, Please state your name. <clears throat> oh, Kent Greer with Banner Air Conditioning. Thank you. Uh, not only am I a uh, Pace Loan contractor, but I'm also a consumer. I put solar on my house. Uh, I'm not sure why the uh, opponents are coining the Pace Loans as being for low income, for elderly, all that kind of connotation to it because it's just not true. Uh, the majority of the homeowners that we've uh, either done solar or air conditioning for have not fallen into the low income or elderly category. Um, we have had no complaints with our homeowners as far as uh, the energy upgrades that we did. The majority of the energy upgrades that we did were for the fact that they were uh, getting, like everybody else in here, getting nothing but uh, a rise in their utility bill. And a few of them were at that point to where what do we do? We got a high mortgage, now we got a high utility bill. You know, their option was to get some kind of energy improvement going on, which in our case was a heating, air conditioning, and the solar. So it definitely helped these people stay in their home. You know, so uh, I think it's kind of unfair that uh, people are coming in here and making it sound like the PACE program, the loan vehicle, is the is the uh, the bad product in this whole scenario these same people could go get home equity loans they could put it on a credit card they could do all the other things for the same energy improvements you know whether they were good improvements or not they you know the pace program is not the only vehicle to get a loan on the house that might take the equity out out of the equation and for you know anybody to call the PACE program, equity stripping, that's what every home improvement loan is. I mean, you're basing your equity and trading it for an improvement. Um, you know, in our area, 60% of the utility bills is due to the heating and air. Um, uh, I think that's it, thanks. Uh, hi there, my name is Matthew Martin. I want to thank, uh, thank you, Councilman Weir, and, and uh, thank you for inviting me to speak as well, Chairman Gonzalez. Um, let me, sh I'd like to share my story. Uh, so I actually have, I have a rental property, and I purchased it last year, and what was really fascinating was I was ready to close, very excited. I got, got the property I wanted, and interesting enough, um, right at the close of escrow, I was told, well, wait a minute, you also have to qualify for a solar lease. And I said, huh, Solar City. So I had to qualify for a lease on something I'm going to have for 20 years, and I will never have the opportunity to own that. Thank you, Elon Musk, um, with Solar City. So I was forced to do that. So I said, okay, and I still have an electric bill. So I said, boy, this isn't that good of a deal. This doesn't seem too good to me. So we're going to fast forward to today, and I'm actually in the process of purchasing a property. And, a, and, and this house has a PACE uh, solar system. So we sat down, and, and I was made aware of it, and we sat down, I sat down with the owner currently and said, look, you know, I, I want this house, and we made an agreement. We reached an agreement, and I'm excited because now my new home is going to have a solar system, and it's going to be paid off when the transfer uh, title happens. And so this is an opportunity for middle and low-income individuals. We've got a lot of older homes in this community. This is an opportunity for people who do not have a high credit score, or they can't go out, or they're not a realtor driving a Mercedes. This is for individuals to be able to afford something that they normally would not be able to do. And using equity on their house, I don't see any problem with that at all. And so for me, I can tell you my experience, it's been tremendous. And if we, if we stop a program like this, uh, like five, six, seven hundred dollar a month electric bills, that's going to continue. If somebody has an opportunity to use the equity in their home to do this and there are disclosures in place, this is a phenomenal program that would allow somebody who could otherwise not afford this be able to have an energy efficient home while reducing their bills. And I urge you guys to keep this program in place for underprivileged and low income households in this community. Thank you. Good morning. I have a letter that I'll share with you uh, 
hard copy and in part. My name is Lynn Runyon. I am a resident of the uh, Sixth Ward in Kern City. I have um, been a resident most of my life in Bakersfield. I'm a retired teacher living on a fixed income. I'm in no way affiliated with either Hero or Pace programs and the opinions expressed here today are truly my own. I firmly believe that the PACE program, and HERO in particular, is a viable option for Kern County. I availed myself of the opportunity to use the HERO program in 2015 when I replaced my roof and my windows. The program was excellent in my opinion. Uh, the citizens of Kern County need to have options for getting loans of various sorts for their home improvements. The PACE program here in particular, in my opinion, is a very viable option when considering how to best economically and environmentally friendly upgrade your property. I highly re recommend and have recommended the HERO program to many, especially friends in Kern County, as a viable option when they are considering improvements. Citizens of Bakersfield Kern County need options. We need strong, professional, and proactive consumer options. Although the HERO program may not be the best option for everyone, it may well be the best option for many. And that option needs to be kept in Kern County for our citizens to consider. I know several Bakersfield residents who have used the HERO program give, and they give glowing recommendations and consider the HERO program to be a valuable asset to the community. It is the client's responsibility to do their homework research and find the possibilities, understand what they are signing before they take out any kind of loan for their properties. The responsibility is on them. A I didn't know or understand is not an acceptable excuse. The same goes for the realtors involved. They must do their due diligence regarding the clients as well. And I didn't know that or I didn't find that from realtors is not acceptable. Several weeks ago, I posted a question on next door Kern City and 25 adjacent neighborhoods. Hero Pays Program, question mark, asking if anyone had used the program, and if so, would they recommend it or not? I've had close to 100 responses to date, perhaps a third of which were negative, usually with regard to having the loan attached to the property taxes and realtors not being able to sell the property. The other responses have been very positive, mostly containing a caveat that the person must do their homework, keep asking questions, and Hero does an absolutely outstanding job of answering questions and understanding how the loan works before they sign any financial papers. I have been very pleased to see the positive responses on the next door thread. Hopefully some of those folks that responded are here today. What I would ask of the Bakersfield City Council, as well as the Kern County Board of Supervisors, is that the Hero Pace programs remain in our area as an additional option for citizens such as myself who have found these options to be the best feed, feed, fit sorry, for their needs. No program is perfect. There is no one size fits all. However, having a variety of options is a great value to everyone in this county. Thank you for your time and consideration. Hi, uh, Councilman <clears throat> Gonzalez and uh, committee. I'm Ben Dominguez with the Oasis Air Conditioning. Uh, this program, besides allowing us to uh, keep our staff busier, and um, it has really been a great benefit to a couple of hundred customers that we've used the program with. Uh, when, we, when we go to someone's home, we fully disclose every type of financing that we have available, which are many, and we, when we let that customer make that choice. And I used PACE myself before we ever tried to use it in our company. I also did a water conservation project and wanted to make sure that everything was up front, that it was legit, that it would be a benefit, that I would not have to have my customers come back and, and, and haunt me later, and hopefully that, that won't happen yet. 
Um, but we have a lot of customers that, yes, it's, it's great to, to come in and offer them uh, energy efficiency, but there's a lot of them that would not have heating or cooling if it wasn't for the program. So it's just another tool in our tool bag. And like uh, I had mentioned before, if, if, if you use the tool right, everybody wins. And um, I was hesitant to say this, but let's not let the need of the few outweigh the, the need of the many. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Chris Morgan. I'm also a resident of Kern City. Our neighborhood was built like 55 years ago. I'm on a fixed income, but I'm neither low income nor am I poor credit. I utilize this system and one thing I'm kind of, I, I'm very surprised at the opposition to this wonderful PACE program. You know, when I buy an automobile, I go to a car dealership that owns the car. When I bought my house, I did not buy it from a real estate company that owned my house. They have no skin in the game at all. They've got a wonderful opportunity to be able to take something that we homeowners, by the sweat of our brows, build up equity in a house, and they, are, they get to end up by selling it real quick and making a nice commission on it. So if they were have to work a little harder, so be it. I've heard somebody come up here and talk about predatory lending. You know what predatory lending is? I've got sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 worth of unused credit on credit cards. I get mailings every single month that says you can have zero APR for 12 months. And then what happens after 12 months? It's 14 to 24% interest. So you think about going and buying an air conditioning or a home improvement or something of that sort, and you kind of can't quite pay that bill off in 12 months, this comes back and it bites you right in the butt, majorly. This PACE program, it's fair interest. It's fair interest, but you know something? It's also buyer beware. I go back, my first mortgage was in the Carter administration. I had a 14% APR mortgage. That's high interest. This at least gives me the opportunity when I wanted to do some improvements on a house that hadn't been touched for 55 years. It let me know that I could just spread that, just like the impounds as I pay for my house and I pay for my property taxes and everything else, that this is going to be paid Taxes are going to go to the city and everything else. I'm sorry that some people may have had some bad circumstances and feel that they were taken advantage. But you know something, in every barrel there is a bad apple. And if there's one or two bad contractors, that doesn't make the program bad. This is simply an option for us as property tax owners, as owners, and I might just well bring up that all of you know, you all work for us. We own this building. Everybody in the county, city, schools works for us. And when there's, make, you'll, you won't always make the right decisions, but these are very, very, very fair programs. And you know something? You know, you go back, sometimes the councils make errors too negotiate contracts, we're probably millions and underfunded on pension liabilities and things like that. But you know what happens? We property owners and taxpayers, we keep funneling the money and so that you can correct the issues and everything else because we all are human. But this is simply an alternative way to finance. It's up to us to be educated. Most people with real poor credit aren't qualified to get a home loan. So if you have a home loan, know where you are, don't be stupid, and simply research. I, you know, I spent 40 years in retail administration and finance. Your predatory lenders, that's go to cash your uh, once a week paycheck. It's called financing a car because you had a repo and paying 24, 25% interest. But the banks out there, as far as I'm concerned, they're treating me as a predatory lender as it is by charging me 24% with perfect credit on a credit card. 
So I'm 100% for the program, and I hope you'll take all of that in consideration. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Paul Mintz. I'm an installer for Northwest Exteriors. Um, a little bit of my history is I've been in construction most of my life. I'm 44 years old and got into the oil industry when oil was going good and worked my way up to a supervisory position, was making good money. Last year got laid off when the market crashed. So I went back to my trade work and was lucky enough to get a job with Northwest Exteriors and majority of our work that we do is through the PACE program. Um, Without the PACE program, we probably have, you know, a, th a third of the work that we have now. Um, in the process, I was able to bring my son on, who's 19, teach him a trade, and give him the opportunity to make a decent living and learn a skill that he can take with him for the rest of his life and always have the mindset of knowing that I can have a job because I know a trade. Trade works what has always kept me uh, working. Um, from what I've seen of the PACE program, I've been with these guys for probably a little over a month and a half. A lot of the jobs that we do are hero and PACE. The homes that we go into, you know, some of them, they're, they're in dire need of home improvements. Some of them are just doing it because it's something that they, that they want. And it does make a difference. When I'm taking these windows out, I take out the old double pane windows, and you're standing in the sun when it's 90 degrees outside, you can feel the heat through the window. You put our new windows in, and you don't feel anything. It's like the air conditioning, that's it. So if you know people saying that these home improvements don't work, they do work, because I stand in front of them every day, and I can tell the difference between. Um, I just. I really believe in the PACE program. I think it's a good opportunity for a lot of people that wouldn't have the availability to get, the, get a loan another way. It gives them an opportunity to improve their home and improve the comfort of their living. And as the gentleman said before, it is the buyer's responsibility to know what you're signing to. Any document that you sign, it's your responsibility to know what you are signing. If it goes to court and you stand in front of the judge and say, oh, well, I didn't know, they're going to say, well, you signed it. So you're responsible for it. So it's do your homework, be educated, be a responsible consumer. Thank you. Good morning, council, staff, press. I am Laura Booker. I moved into Kern County in December of 2002 into a house that is the same age as I am. 66 and it was in my family's trust in April of last year we took it out of the trust and put it into my name so I went to transfer the insurance couldn't find insurance because I had a shake roof about after a month of digging I found one that would give me liability only okay I couldn't find fire insurance I dealt with Kern County Fire Prevention Bureau and my first responders, Wasco Fire Department, and uh, found out what they needed to keep me safe because I'm in the middle of ag land. And, uh, and uh, I, I uh, convinced the farmer around me to help me, and they put a fire department cap on one of their wells. And so I said, okay, insurance companies, later. I'll just, you know, sweat it out here because I feel safe now. But I ran into a friend, because I needed a roof. I have a shake, I had a shake roof, who said, uh, you know, you don't have to blow your emergency fund here to get a roof, which was leaking. And uh, therefore, I fell into the purview of the HERO program. And I'm here to tell you, there has been full disclosure every step of the way. I was explained everything. I am fully aware. I've always paid my property taxes. And because of the HERO program and the improvements, I have R49 insulation now. And uh, my $400 power bill went to $10. And so my home is worth more now. 
So I expect not only the hero portion of the loan portion of my uh, property taxes, it's obviously, I'm ready for that, but also the value of my home in the county is up. And, uh, and uh, it became particularly important that I was able to get this benefit because I had hospice in my home the last month and a half, and whereas I had never had half of my home cooled, I now have a safe environment. I was able to go through what I needed to go through, feeling like I was providing for my family. And so, do everything you can. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Bert Alton, and um, in 2009, um, my wife was very ill, and um, she passed away in 2009, and I was left almost a half a, half a million dollars in debt just from her medical bills. And when I needed to uh, improve my home, um, I had got a hold of uh, a Don, uh, Lanier with Northwest Exteriors, and I need to replace some windows in it. I had the aluminum windows in it, and the aluminum windows would be so hot that you actually couldn't even touch them on the inside. And my electric bill was just out, uh, out uh, enormous. And so I ended up filing bankruptcy, and I needed to get this, uh, these windows and stuff put, put in because my power bill was out of control. And um, Don had explained the, uh, the HERO program, and uh, I went home <clears throat> that night, done some thinking. He told me what the windows would be. Went home, done some thinking, and I, I think a lot of it, uh, you, you have to do the, do the math. And... Um, <clears throat> I got a hold of Don and said, well, let's go ahead and have the windows put in. And uh, we did, and I got him on the HERO program. And if, uh, if it hadn't been for the HERO program, I probably wouldn't have the windows and the doors that I have right now. And I would hate to see this program, <clears throat> this program cut because there's a lot of low in, uh, income people such as myself that live on fixed income is the only way we, we could afford to, to have this done. And I would really hate to see this program cut. Thank you. Hello, my name is Don Lanier, and I run a home improvement company here in town called Northwest Exteriors. I'm also a hero customer twice, two different properties, very pleased with the program. The city voted and pays to create jobs update homes in our community, save energy, and to help homeowners improve the quality of their life. There is no, no dispute that we did this. It has been accomplished. I have heard all the rhetoric about PACE causing homeowners to lose their homes, yet I haven't seen any proof that PACE itself has caused any people to lose their homes. But I will tell you what will cause people to lose their homes, losing their jobs. My company alone went from eight employees to 30 because of PACE. And now I'm having to face the possibility of having to lay off 50% of my hardworking employees. I dread having to tell them that because of the decision that their council, city council made, I don't have enough work for them. Several of my workers came to us because of the oil fields. Where will they go now? I ask you to base your vote on the facts which favors PACE and your constituents. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jose Aguilar. I'm the owner of Big Builders. Um, I'm a contractor that does air conditioning and roofs. And basically, I want to say that my business has employed four times as many as people as before I started doing PACE program. Another thing that I do is that I help out a lot of Hispanic community people, uh, Spanish-speaking people to do PACE financing. Uh, 
Um, most of the people that I do business with are not really concerned about getting energy efficiency. Um, most of the people are just wanting to get a roof. Sometimes I walk into the homes and their air conditioner doesn't work. You know, they're wanting to do an upgrade for their family uh, to do better living. Thank you. Good morning, my name is, thank you for allowing us to speak this morning. My name is Brian McCarty. I'm the Kern County Account Manager for the HERO Program. I've been here for two and a half years. I've been directly responsible for the training over 100 contractors. I've been on hundreds of ride-alongs with these reps who are going to the homes where they will talk about what they do, and then I train them on how to present the HERO Program. We're not CPAs, we don't give tax advice. The first disclosure is in the event of a refinance or sale, mortgage lender may require this to be paid off. They are fully aware of that. Um, this program, obviously, there are a lot of good things about it. I've been in the homes where I've seen people. It's not just for low income or low credit people. We've sold in Seven Oaks, we've sold all over the place, okay? This is an option. And homeowners have responsibilities and they make their own choices. Disclosures are important. Those, these disclosures are being made by the program. When someone goes forward with us, we verify the terms on the phone. We record that. We verify the terms. So I asked, I know, I ask you to keep this program so homeowners have this option. If, you, if this goes away, we understand the economic impact on contractors. We've got great contractors here. BSW Roofing and Solar, been in business 75 years. Been, been from Oasis family-owned, local people, they would not be offering PACE if this was harming their homeowners. Thank you for your time. We have 38 seconds left. Any additional speakers in support of PACE? Sir, you have 38 seconds. Please yes, I know. This won't your name. Good afternoon. My name is Fred Thomas. I'm a lifelong yeah. resident of Kern County. Um, I was told I'd have a couple of minutes, so I'm going to keep it really short. You've already heard of all the benefits that PACE offers. Benefits to customers, benefits to the community and jobs, benefits to state, local, and federal entity, and taxes paid. I don't have time to go over that. I am not going to deny that there's problems with PACE, but I, want, I will say this. The problems are a minute few. The problems are the result of the law being very brand new. It is your job, it is hopefully, That's to look at it, Thank look you. at it, and then... That's time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll now move on to the rebuttal period. Uh, we'll begin with those opposed to PACE who will have five minutes uh, to give a rebuttal. Thank you. Um, I want to thank everyone that's actually taken the time to stand up here. This isn't easy. And I'm not going to rehash the stories because for every positive story, there's a negative story. For every person who's benefited from the program, we can show you someone who has been devastated by the program. I'm going to go back to my initial comment that it is not our government's responsibility to police their self-admitted bad actors. We are not to use our resources to correct a policy that in its current state allows for that type of behavior. I don't know how many is too many for you. I don't know how many people to lose their home, whether it's the, the lady we heard earlier that can't sell, whether it's Mr. Crabtree's examples of the short sales that are being forced. I can give you foreclosures. I can give you failed transactions. I can give you sellers that had to write checks. It's, it's the program the policy itself that needs to go back, needs to be pulled back, we need to take a pause. It will go back to the makers and it will come back and look different. If we wait for that to happen and we allow what is going on to continue in our community, you will have more foreclosures. You will have more people who cannot sell. I understand that some of the major players, like Hero, Y Green, I understand that they have tried to self-police. I understand that we have some very reputable contractors who do excellent work. I've worked with them, 
and I have had agents sell properties that are affiliated with them, and it's been an easy, smooth transaction. It doesn't change those that are facing the loss of their home or the devastation. The program allows that. I have a list here of 14 other options that can accomplish the same energy efficient renovations. PACE, as it's already been admitted by them, is not the only option. If they were to look at other, and I'll turn this in, other options, even the low income, even the financially challenged have other resources. The difference is it is not put onto a tax roll that places the burden of bookkeeping on our assessor. I'd like to refer again to Mr. Tandy's opening comments and how he referenced the challenges that are faced by our county departments by Mr. Lifquist's letter and what he is facing on a daily basis. And it's not the good stories that he's facing. It's the challenges. The good stories are fine. It's the challenges that we are concerned about. It's the predatory vendor who doesn't hold themselves to the same ethical standard as the other whole. It is those dynamics that we have to stop. And we can't stop them at a local level. We don't have the opportunity to correct the flaws in the PACE policy. So I'm going to turn this in. I thank you for your time. I, again, want to thank everyone that spoke, pro and con. And I ask that you please, again, vote on C and rescind the five resolutions and recommend to the full council that they vote against it. Thank you. Thank you. We have a, a minute and 15 uh, seconds remaining for those opposed to PACE, if anyone would like to comment. Jumping up, I'm going to. A couple of years ago, we had a legislation Please called Dodd Frank. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Glenn Porter uh, with the Bakersfield Association of Realtors. We had a, a program called Dodd Frank. Dodd Frank brought in loans for people that couldn't afford houses. They didn't have to qualify, didn't have to show income. We know what happened there. We have the same kind of problem right now. We have a program that, yeah, it serves the community in some ways, but a lot of people in that same situation. It's the new government legislation coming down that allows people who may not be able to afford the payments to get it done. Otherwise, wouldn't they get home equity loans at 4%? Why would they pay 8%? So the, the problem I think that we have here is we need to be a little cautious about what we're allowing because it serves a f quite a few, I'm sure, but it hurts a really uh, n a large number of people that really don't have the expertise maybe that some of these other more intelligent people have to read and understand they just accept the facts of what they're presented and says, oh, it's a good program. I can get my air conditioning now and save money until the tax bill comes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll now turn to the five-minute rebuttal for those in favor of PACE. Um, good morning, uh, members of the committee. My name is Jeremy Hutman. I'm with the California First PACE program. Because we only have five minutes, I'm just going to speak really shortly mm -hmm. uh, about uh, the legislation that's currently in, uh, in Sacramento. Um, back uh, in 2016, the, uh, the legislature passed AB 2693. And, uh, and what that did was created mortgage level disclosures for property assessed clean energy programs. And so now that just went into effect on uh, January 1st. So what that means is anybody who's receiving uh, a property assessed clean energy or PACE financing receives uh, disclosures that are similar to what they would receive with a mortgage that includes APR, uh, interest, term, basically all of those details are completely laid out for the property owner. Then uh, on top of that, what's happening this year, and this is what we're really excited about, is SB 242 is currently with the Senate. And, uh, and that is a, a, a continuation of AB 2693, where they're, where they're continuing the, uh, the consumer protection. So I'll just list real quickly. Um, 
for AB 20, or a, uh, SB 242, laws uh, heavily influenced by consumer advocates, and it's supported by the, uh, the PACE industry. It's going to focus on additional consumer protections, such as the ability to pay in underwriting, a live phone call to confirm the terms of the disclosures that are, they're already receiving through uh, AB 2693, uh, stronger contractor standards, stronger marketing standards, and then also forbearance. So the PACE industry, we're, we're already running a great program that's available for your community, and we're committed to making it even better. The, the story of PACE has been a, an effective idea that's constantly getting better, and we have great program out there right now, and we're really excited about what it's doing in the community. Thank you. George with Y Green Energy Fund. I just want to make a quick comment uh, in regards to oversight of the PACE program. Uh, each PACE program has a joint power of authority, which consists of elected officials that are members of that authority, which have oversight over each of the PACE programs that are here. Thank you very much. Hello, Dustin Rylick of uh, Renovate America's HERO program. I'm here before you uh, to plead with this council and this committee to make these options available for your homeowners. Uh, in this room today, there were lots of people that you heard positive testimony from. People that if they didn't have PACE available to them, they wouldn't have been able to make this much needed upgrade to their property. PACE is simply an option. About three years ago, you made the HERO program available right here at this council as an option for your homeowners to be able to do solar renewable energy financing to do energy efficiency financing, to be able to do water efficiency financing. All of these goals are being made, and what I would, or all, what we're looking at is we've done close to 4,000 transactions in Kern County. And as your city manager said, over 2,000 transactions just in Bakersfield. Of those, there's only been five different homeowners in all of Kern County that have had a, a, uh, a foreclosure on their home, and three of those were in Bakersfield. I can go over details of each of those with you. Um, in our program, our program continues to get better and better with all of the disclosures, 100% confirmed term calls, interest rates are coming down because of the competition in the marketplace, ability to pay is being considered in the new legislation and by all of us as PACE providers already. Uh, I know that Mr. Lifquest was, was quoted in, as the assessor for Kern County, but let's realize what really, who actually does this transaction. Your auditor and controller places it on the tax bill, your treasurer and tax collector collector collect on the tax bill. The assessor is simply there to assess properties and create value. So he's not even involved in this transaction. So I'm not understanding why he was actually re reached out to on this. Um, we actually do an MLS call out for all homeowners where there is a property that hits the multiple listing service. We make sure that we call the homeowner to make sure that they remember that that's on their tax bill. We make sure that we get a hold of the real estate agent who is actually the listing agent so that they have early disclosure. I know that they should be pulling a preliminary title report and that's part of what they do, but we want to be helpful to the process. So we do that. In, in Kern County overall, out of 4,000 projects, there's only been 170 homes that have actually hit the MLS. So we're talking about less than 5% of the people that have tried to sell their property. And for the better good of your community, Please make PACE available. Here in this room today are people that didn't have a chance to talk because of the 30 minute time limit. Please stand if you are in favor of keeping PACE here in the city of Bakersfield. Whether you're a contractor, an employee of a contractor, a homeowner who's concerned, please stand up because your voice should be heard as well. And these are your constituents that really want PACE here in your city. Thank you. And that's time. I'll now return it to the committee for questions and comments. Who wants to begin? You're the youngest. I get to go because I'm the youngest, apparently. Uh, well, thanks, everybody. This is, uh, this is a, an extremely uh, passionate item, uh, and I think that's that's further proved by the fact that we actually had to move it over to council chambers to accommodate everyone and have enough space. So uh, I appreciate everyone taking time out of their schedules today to be here uh, to comment on both sides on this particular issue. Um, you know, I was, I, I chaired budget and finance when this, uh, when uh, 
we initially sent this item to the full city council um, a few years ago and you know at the time believed based on what I'd heard from staff, uh, what we had discussed in our committee meetings, that this program was an all-in-all -all win for the city of Bakersfield, and, and that's why I uh, had, uh, had recommended, along with my colleagues, that we move forward with it um, in our community. And since then, I think there's been a whole lot of noise, and, and truthfully, I'll be honest, it's, it's actually, and I don't know how my colleagues feel, um, but a little hard to weed through all that noise. You've got pa impassioned stories on both sides. Um, and so, you know, for me, I've got, I, what I'd like to do is try and to set aside those impassioned stories to really look at the actual policy, which I think is what we're discussing here today. Um, I think it has become quite apparent to me that there are certainly bad actors um, uh, out there uh, that are taking advantage of people. That is, I think, uh, something you see across the board in every marketplace. Um, I, I, you know, I don't want to pick on uh, someone, but the biggest abuser would be uh, cash advance companies, which FYI charge a whole lot more than 10% uh, um, in interest um, for their products, yet they still exist in our city as well. Um, In, in my mind, uh, there is, by my observation and fr from what I have seen and been told and uh, based on discussions here and, and prior to this, that there is a public good being accomplished. Um, there is uh, there's a program being offered or afforded or an option being afforded to individuals who would otherwise not be able to take advantage of it. Um, I am... I said earlier only 26, but even at 26, I know um, when and if I get into or sign on to a bad deal. Um, and I've learned very quickly, because it's happened, uh, how to learn from those mistakes and not do them again. Um, but it is, as a consumer, my responsibility to know what I'm signing on to, know what I'm agreeing to. Um, it, and that starts all the way back in high school when I decided to get a car that I could not afford and then got stuck with the darn thing for a few years. Um, those are decisions I had to learn from. Um, but it really, the responsibility fell on myself to know what I was signing up for. Um, you know, based on the fact that I think there are bad actors, I've been, um, and perhaps staff can share a little bit on this, I'm under the impression there are jurisdictions uh, in California that have gone above and beyond whatever standard uh, rules and guidelines and principles already exist for PACE. I'm curious because I, I know I've, and truthfully there's a lot of paper up here, um, there was a participatory agreement I've seen which seemed to address some of, of the concerns I've heard. Um, could you guys comment at all on on that and whether or not you, uh, uh, you've you seen, has it benefited other communities and, and do we feel this maybe accomplishes or addresses some of the issues we're hearing today? Council Member Avera, if I may, I'll share the answer with the city attorney, I'll start it. Uh, we don't have an enforcement tool or mechanism. The city only has the ability to authorize the programs uh, to exist or not, and the uh, programs and how they operate are spelled out under state law. And while we have seen participation agreements making certain promises, uh, the city staff is not in the kitchen when the papers are signed, and we have no ability to monitor or control uh, compliance. So with that, I'll ask Jenny to comment. Councilmember Rivera, I share the comments of the city manager and our staff is not aware of any additional language or tweaking, so to speak, that we can do to the joint powers um, agreements. As the city manager indicated, they were given to us and that is how we presented them to the council to either join or, or not join. If you happen to be aware of some other jurisdictions that um, have carve out, so to speak, I would be interested in reading those. Okay, so I have here a PACE participation agreement, a, a model. Um, 
that that does spell out some items. Have have you folks seen? Have you seen this? It's a participation agreement for City of Bakersfield property assessed clean energy providers. Councilmember Rivera, yes. Okay. It, it's um, so it's staff's position that this particular agreement is is that there's no point in it or or I guess I'm unclear on what we think about the agreement <clears throat> again um, if this were legislation being crafted by the City Council for uh, governance within the city and you could tell us to include certain protections or certain elements and we would include them uh, then that would be possible that is not the case um, we simply allow the subscription to a state authorized program and as such again there's no enforcement tool or for it, may, it might be a statement of good faith but we have no mechanism to enforce the agreement or control the behavior and again city attorney councilmember rivera again my understanding is is that was a sample agreement that's not again that's i don't know whether or not that's the actual agreement that uh, a potential consumer a potential consumer signs um, maybe by way of example I know at one point we had discussed uh, perhaps the possibility that the pace programs would be limited to simply solar projects um, but I think staff's recommendation was that it would be very difficult to define what was meant by solar projects and again I use that simply as an example um, so that would be my that would be my comment to your uh, to your question Okay. And again, if that agreement is actually being used, as the city manager indicated, it doesn't fall on us to enforce it. Um, at that point, it would be up to the consumer to actually seek private advice. Okay. And I, I hear that. But am I correct in, in assuming that the five PACE programs for which we have signed on to uh, I, our enforcement mechanism is, is being able to terminate the agreement. So if I, if I got the five PACE providers in a room and said, you, either, you guys either do this or you don't, and right. if you don't, we're terminating your agreement, um, is there a reason why we would not be able to do that? Councilman Rivera, I would say to you that um, the response would be is that we would, by resolution, if that's what the council wanted to do, we would withdraw from the JPA. We would, we would withdraw from the authority. We wouldn't cancel that agreement. So if we withdraw from each of the PACE programs, um, whatever agreements the consumer has signed uh, um, remain in effect, arguably, unless they get them canceled, again, by going to a private, private attorney. Okay. Well, I guess, so, I, I'm, I'm under the impression any action we take here uh, today or any action ultimately taken by the council really has, only has an impact on future transactions, not on past ones. So I'm, I'm only looking through this of, of the lens of, of how to address issues moving forward. So That's correct. We don't have an agreement with PACE. It's just it was a resolution to join, to join the JPAs. Okay. And, and we could just as quickly have a resolution withdrawing from that's correct. the JPAs. Okay. So, I mean, in my mind, that's an enforcement tool. I mean, I, I think I figure that's why the Association of Realtors is here and why other folks have shown up, because it's within our power to withdraw from, uh, from the programs. Um, is, is it not the case that the city of Los Angeles has has adopted or gone above and beyond um, in requiring certain or more expanded, dis more extensive disclosures and um, uh, cost protections and other things. Um, I was under the impression that that had occurred in the city of LA. Councilmember Rivera, I'm not aware of that, but we can certainly look into that for you. Okay. Um, can, can staff confirm the number that was shared earlier with respect to foreclosures? Um, I heard two foreclosures in the city of Bakersfield related to 
the uh, discussion today? Do we know that to be true? Uh, Council Member Rivera, um, there could be um, various ways of uh, going into foreclosure and, and more than one reason, and so we don't have direct information upon which to either confirm or deny that statement. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm curious to hear what other folks have to say. I don't, I don't have much else to say other than, you know, it's been brought up uh, today, the, the email we received from Jonathan Lifquist, the assessor recorder. And I don't know if folks have taken time to read it, but uh, one, it's my understanding that it was unsolicited. So, you know, he um, took it upon himself to let us know what his, what his thoughts were. But really, in reading it, it's more a random musing than anything else. And, and really, for me, is the equivalent of, of all of the impassioned pleas we've heard today on both sides of the issue. So I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily moved one way or another um, by his comments with respect to the program. Um, because really, it, it, he, he finalizes by saying that there's a possibility that problems can get worse. And I, I guess I just, I can't, I can't, um, I don't like the idea of, of uh, making decisions based on, on future possibilities. If possibilities end up being reality and end up being true, then I think it's a, you know, then I think it's time for the city council to take uh, further action. But I'm just not convinced or moved by um, his statements that he sent over to us. Um, with that, I will uh, shut up for a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Weir. Thank you. <clears throat> I have a whole lot of things written down here, but I don't really want to take the time to share most of them. Um, I had pulled out the participant agreement, and I had read that, and I reviewed it. And to me, it just seemed like um, an agreement that would pull the city of Bakersfield further into um, responsibility with regard to what's going on out in the PACE program or the HERO program. And I don't think that's a position we need to be in. Uh, I don't want to see us getting into a situation where, well, this is the city of Bakersfield, this is the agreement they made a sign, so it, it should be okay. Um, I think it's very incremental and, and I would hate to see us go there. Um, a couple of the things that do disturb me is comments like customers will not be able to afford without pace. Uh, contractors will experience a business downturn or failure without pace. Um, that, that does bother me because in my professional capacity that's a sign that whoa, there's something going on here. And I'm not saying that there is, but it's, that's a serious consideration for me. Because if they cannot, if they cannot find financing in any other way, it's a sign that there's a problem. And um, we're letting them on the tax rolls in a super priority lien in which they may not be able to perform. And I can also tell you in my professional capacity that the contractors and the lenders in this situation, their relationship is so closely tied together, so closely tied together, that my accountant red flags pop up. And if I was the accountant for this type of situation, uh, it would be my professional responsibility to to really investigate and make sure there's, there is nothing abnormal in that relationship. Um, I have thought all along that this is and may be the exact definition of poor public policy. You can go out and you can get improvements. 100% financed, 
If they're solar improvements, you get 30% tax credit. So you're getting 130% of what you're putting in here and no skin in the game. To me, that's a problem. Um, there's legislation flying back and forth and supposed to um, require disclosures, more um, toward lending guidelines. I understand that. I've read the policy. I don't see any penalties. I don't know how they're going to enforce it. The fact that the state is investing our money in a reserve pool really, really makes me concerned about what's really going on with the PACE program. And since our, um, our decision really relies on what's good public policy and what's not good public policy, um, that's kind of where we need to make our decision. And I appreciate everybody that came here tonight. I know, uh, I know it's hard to get up and stand in front of that mic. It's, I've been here for 11 years. It's, it's difficult for me to, well, I have trouble talking anyway. So um, I appreciate that. And I know that we have good contractors in this town. Their reputation is important to them and they would never, ever do anything that they thought would harm, harm their clients. And I, and I appreciate those. And I'm sure that's the majority of people that are involved with this. But to me, honestly, the decision lies with, is this public policy that we want to continue, regardless if it's going to be changed or not, is this public policy that we want to continue. And I've seen nothing really today that really compels me one way or the other. It, it was my opinion coming in, it's poor public policy, it's still my opinion that's poor public policy. But I don't know that from what I've seen today that um, I would be ready to make a recommendation to the full city council, which leaves us a few options. We could actually ask for more information or a different type of information and we could fill this hall up again. And if that didn't satisfy us, we could ask for that to happen again and I don't see that as a solution to any problem. Um, or we could say, you know what, it's, it's time to put this to bed and just refer it back to city council without a recommendation. And for me, as I sit here today, I see that as the best, the best resolution of this. So, I would make a motion that we send this back to the full city council at the appropriate meeting and at that time we'll be able to make a decision. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Weir. Um, before we get to your motion, I'd like to make a few comments myself. First, I'd like to thank all those who came up and spoke uh, this morning to the committee. I appreciate all of you and those who are working on both sides of the issue. Um, I appreciate all of your due diligence and your work in meeting with various council members, including myself. Um, this is a frustrating issue in that we really don't have a lot of authority to fix many of the concerns that have been addressed. And we're put in a position to either continue a program that has some flaws or kill a program that benefits um, many homeowners, as was, as was demonstrated uh, this morning. Um, and so we've talked a lot about public policy. I guess the first question that I would ask in terms of when we consider public policy and whether to cancel this particular program is what is the harm? What is the real harm here? And is it significant enough for us to uh, end the PACE program? I mean, I look at the staff report and PACE, the PACE program providers um, were approved over a duration of five years, beginning in 2010. And the last two programs 
were approved in September of 2015. When we look at the complaints, and I review the minutes after each of the, uh, at, at each city council meeting where these contracts were approved, I didn't review, I didn't read any complaints from anyone about the PACE uh, program or PACE providers at that time. Looked at the document that's provided by the Bakersfield Association of Realtors, and I appreciate that. And there are 26 cases that are listed here. Um, so I, I'd like to see if we can get a full scope of the number of instances where um, homeowners have been wronged, um, considering that there are 2,700 projects that have been completed since 2014. Um, I'd like to get a better sense of that, and if Mr. Weir's motion does uh, pass this morning, uh, I'd like to have better data on that at the council meeting. You know, it was commented that this is reminiscent of the mortgage crisis. But during that time, mortgages didn't go away. They were just better regulated. And so I wonder if we can have better information of where the state and the federal government are in uh, regulating uh, PACE products uh, throughout the state and the country. I guess I could go on too, um, but I'll reserve my comments until we have another meeting regarding this matter. Council Member Rivera. We have a motion on the floor. There's no need for a second. That's correct. The motion is to, uh, with staff's recommendation on item D as in dog, uh, refer the issue to the city council without a committee recommendation. Okay. Uh, thank you. So I, I'll, I'll support that motion. I, I agree with Council Member uh, where I think this particular item actually needs to be in front of the full council. Um, I, I would ask to, to piggyback or, or just stress the importance, I think, of, of preparing some information prior to that meeting for us, specifically on, I'm under the impression Los Angeles has done something. So uh, can you give us a better sense of what it was, um, and is it working, um, and is it actually enforceable? Council Member Gonzalez just brought this up uh, with respect to uh, actions being taken in Sacramento and actions being taken at the federal level. I'd like to understand what exactly those actions are trying to accomplish um, and uh, if they actually, if, if by our estimation they actually accomplish anything. Um, and, and I think to, to just extend on uh, my questions earlier, I, I'd like to better understand what this uh, PACE participation agreement accomplishes as well, and whether or not um, there is, there's a way to uh, tie that to um, the agreement we have with the JPA. Um, that's all I have, thank you. We have a motion by Council Member Weir to send the issue to the full City Council without a committee recommendation. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Chairman Gonzalez? Yes. Um, this is going to take a while for us to assemble, so if uh, you will be tolerant of uh, uh, giving staff uh, 30 to 60 days or thereabouts, uh, I don't think we can have this ready for the next agenda. Thank you. That brings us to item five, committee comments. Are there any comments? Seeing none, that brings us to adjournment, and we'll adjourn at 1227. Thank you all. We did know.